Welcome back. My, it's been a while. Um, actually, this makes me think there's one last thing I should be testing here, and that's the audio balance. So without further ado, let me check that out. Uh, also, I gotta turn my speakers back down so you don't hear like a double click every time there's a move. So, hopefully this is balanced well. Let's check. Okay, so I'm louder than it, but not by very much. Let me bump that to minus 35. Uh, and I think we'll be good. Sound check. Oh, I've got a. Let's get some bullet game going here so I get a lot of noises. That's still quite annoying to me. Let me bump that to minus 40 or so. Um, I'll try minus 40 and a half. Okay, so yeah, this seems to be better audio balance. Welcome back. Here we are. Playing some chess. I know it's the game everybody's been wanting to see. And so, yeah, let's let's play some. Um, uh, do I want to pick up one of these tournaments? How are things going in the hourly classical? There's two hours left. So I don't want to commit to that. Uh, what other events could I pick from? Uh, so, sure, let's hop right in with some 5-0. This would be a good warm-up. have to wait for a pairing and we'll get started. Any second now. You would imagine that with 40 players in a tournament I would not have to wait five minutes to get a pairing in a five minute event. Just speculating. Here we are. Hey look, we got a good opponent. He's probably a bit surprised that he got me, given that I'm in the last place in the event. But hey, uh, I think I normally play the King's Gambit Declined. So this is my normal tournament way of addressing this particular opening. Um, I don't see that one very often. And the reason is I can just check here, and it's not really clear what white's doing. Um, okay, yeah, we can trade off. I'm not sure if I should play queen e7 or if I should castle. But either way, I've got a pretty reasonable position, and it's not so clear what white's doing. Um... Queen e7 actually looks tempting. I want to know more about it. I'm not sure that it's the right move, um, but it's the right move for us to do some learning today. So what makes this interesting is that if white just defends this, say with the bishop, I can capture e4 and play f5. Um, so really if he wants to defend that he's forced to play queen e2 which interferes with the idea of castling right away now if i take bishop takes f5 castle pawn takes knight takes i can't do queen takes back um so i'm starting to kind of regret this but on the other hand i'm not sure that this trade of queen e7 for bishop d3 is bad um 
I might end up playing knight b4 and then a Pierce's Pierce ish signed a kind of manner might end up shuffling the knight to c5. That happens in the Pierce a lot. I keep mispronouncing that, but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, the Pierce. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so, okay, he is astutely noting I can't play bishop e6 on account of d5. Nor can I... Well, I might be able to play d5 here. That'd be kind of a game changer now, wouldn't it? I could pile up several pieces on that pretty quickly. And if I play d5 and he pushes past, I just play knight e4. He takes d5. I don't really have any counterplay. Okay, so I could complete development, or I could play... Here, let's defend this. So I can move my bishop and develop it. Yeah, there are many people who believe this is the best game of all time. It's certainly stood this test of time. Um... It's remained popular for... Uh, who knows how many hundreds of years. Um, so, I'm predicting e5. Let's get my king out of here. I don't have any pawn weaknesses, but I really don't have much activity either. Um... Really, I'm not sure where to go. Okay, so now I can... I mean, my knight doesn't have very many good squares, but uh, normally I'd want to put it on b4, but that's not possible here. Uh, d8 is just flat out terrible. a5 is less terrible since I can reroute it through b7 to c5 if I have to. And I think I do. I think that's necessary here. So we're going to take the long route with this knight. Oh, that's clever. So now I'm going to have to play a5 to get this knight out. And he's going to play a3 to keep my knight in. That's well played. Oh. So... I don't know. Senate had a pretty good run, too. Go is still running pretty hard, believe it or not. Uh, but yeah. And for what it's worth, Checkers is still a good game. Uh, there are competitive Checker Leagues. Or checkers leagues. Um, well, my position's falling apart. I have to stop knight c6, which is kind of an admission that this is not going so well. Oh. Uh-oh. So I spotted this rook c1 idea. Um, thankfully, I've got knight e8, but if I'm starting to play moves like knight e8, I'm in trouble. They got trouble in River City. Capital T rhymes with P and that stands for poker. No, I don't know. Um, so where do I want or need my pieces so I don't lose this? I think the queen's got to go to d7 so I could push c5 in a moment of desperation. I think he's just going to play bishop b5 and I have to go back. Although queen g4 is possible too. Oh wait, no it's not because I just dropped c7. Um, might be worth dropping the pawn or two pawns or however many pawns I have to drop just to get some active pieces. Uh, except it's not. So we're going to go back. Um... Now he plays rook c1, and if I play knight e8, it doesn't even hold. 
because he's got bishop takes. So c7 is falling. My entire pos oh, why would he do that? That's a really terrible square for the bishop. And I'm just going to take this turn to move my bishop out. And if he plays b5, I... <laughs> uh, now the game begins, uh, I hope. I'm sensing that my opponent is frustrated. You don't trap your own bishop um, willy-nilly without some kind of emotion. Yeah, I will do more go. The main reason I'm doing chess instead of go today is because people want me to do chess. Um, personally, I'd rather do some go, but I don't think it'd be as well attended. Um, well, so, oh crap, well, I meant to play queen c5, but I am getting crushed on the clock anyway. Let's look at that game. That was funny. Um, yeah, see, I was doing just fine. Everything was A-OK, -okay, you know? Nothing to worry about. Just plus one score. Um, I intended queen c5, accidentally slipped it to d6, but, eh. Where did this really fall apart? White castling. So I should have thrown in knight d5. That occurred to me after I played knight c6. That maybe I should have just done this right away. I count on knight b4 ideas. I didn't even see knight e3. But this idea of getting the knight out of the way and being able to push on the king's side could have been pretty interesting. Um, wait. Uh, this move was knight d5. Oh. I'm sorry, I, meant, I said that I saw this. I actually saw it before I castled. Not in this particular position. Um, this is weird stuff, man. Really, really weird stuff. So, I didn't expect white would take that. I mean, I didn't even see it hanging in this particular analysis, but given that it's hanging and he can take it and I can take the bishop in return for it. That's pretty weird. Uh, did I mess up in the opening anywhere? Oh, bishop b4 is not best. Okay, let's check our book. Bishop b6. Oh, this, this looks a little bit more... I mean, I know there's a b pawn, but I want to say that with this pawn back on f2 and with this pawn removed, this looks a lot more like an Evans Gambit. Um, and bishop b6 is pretty thematic there. Okay, but how would this continue? Knight c3, castle. I mean, I'm comfortable here, right? At least I have something to attack. Whereas with bishop b4 and trading off my bishop, that's like one of my two active pieces and I'm at a space deficit. Here, white's got a weakness on d4 and I'm harping on it right away. Um, so, keep that in mind next time somebody plays c3 and d4 in the King's Gambit. I've had a number of King's Gambits where white, upon seeing me decline the Gambit, just goes completely berserk. Uh, I had a tournament game where... Some, I forget if he was like rated 18 or 1900 or something. He was a pretty strong player. Probably 1800. Um, and he ended up letting me. Oh, we're going to go this way, are we? Yeah, letting me check him. And, um, and got his entire center and king's side a little bit compromised. And I was playing black side of the king's gambit. 
Wait, you're gonna... I mean, this doesn't look safe. This really does not look safe for black. Um, what is this opening? What are we doing here, buddy? Also, I mean, I'm tempted to push c5. It doesn't feel right. Um, if I play queen b3, he's going to play b6 and I can't play c5. If I play c5 right away, he could play queen c7, preventing bishop f4. And I don't have a way to really increase pressure on this pawn. Um, something really weird is going on here, because you don't play bishop e6 in this opening, and I'm trying to figure out why not. You'll note that I'm already down a minute on the clock, and I'm still thinking and talking. I don't care. If I can get a good position, it's worth a minute. Um, so, if, I mean, if I play c5, he just moves his bishop out this way, and it's no good. Uh, I could play b3. I get my knight pinned, and it's pretty awkward. Normally, a bishop goes to f5, so I mean, I could exploit the fact that it's not on its normal square. I could play queen c2. I don't really see anything interesting there. Um, actually, so he hasn't played bishop f5. I want to deny bishop b4, so I'm going to spend a tempo on this. Um, and I could just develop at my leisure here. It's going to be slightly awkward that his bishop doesn't have a good square. Um, I mean, he could try to move his bishop to f6, that involved knight e4. And if he's playing knight e4, then this bishop's not supposed to be there. That's, that's my running theory. Um, so now I just play knight to e5, right? think so. I mean, why not? Bishop g5 might be even more convincing here. It seems like a reasonable place to put the bishop. I don't want to move the knight twice in the opening until I finish developing. And this defends the queen in the event that the d-file does open up. So, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um... Yeah, I'm down on time. I know I said I didn't care, but it's not comfortable being down on time. I think it's useful. I mean, if you're getting a good position out of it, by all means, do it. You'll learn a lot this way. Um, but it's not as fun doing it this way. It's more fun being the aggressor and your opponent being defensive and having to find resources um, with no time to think. But this is where the challenge and the fight and, in my opinion, the interesting part of the game is. Um, okay, so that knight's... it's not going to e5, it's going to b6. Um, yeah, let's just develop. See if he's really get committed to playing his knight over to b6. Um, Did I take his knight? I don't think so. Here, let me just finish my development. I really, really like grabbing pawns. So it's bothering me immensely that I'm down a pawn. Like, you have no idea how much that bothers me here. <laughs> but, um, that's what the Catalan calls for, is, uh, 
just giving the pawn and getting activity for it. Um, well, let's trade off the bishop. Occupy the open file. And see what I can... Uh, really? What's so good about this move? Inform me. What am I missing here? Right, so I play knight h4, right? I mean, I know I'm in a pin. I'm not worried about the pin. Not um, overly concerned, anyhow. So I'm not seeing what my opponent's planning, other than just playing heckling moves. Um, but maybe that's his plan, is to just play one challenging move after another. I'm guessing that my bishop's misplaced on e2. Um, well, it's not terrible there, but... Um, It seems like a good square for the knight. Oops, that's not my knight. There's my knight. Uh, bishop. Oh, I've got six seconds remaining. Perfect. I might not be winning this one. Maybe I should be a little bit more concerned about my time situation. I usually play with an increment, so playing without an increment's really weird, and it's causing me to fumble pretty badly. Um, but there's nothing I can do at this point other than just play random moves or resign. Resignation's an option here. I lose on time. Alright, so with that warm-up of losing two games in a row, hey look, it wants me to join the arena. Let's not. Uh, let's play some 3-2. Hey look, it's our buddy No Joke. Good luck. Ooh, and he's playing um, Yalyukin. This should be good fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a buddy no joke. Just gotta say sup. Let's see if he actually knows this line. Or if he's just faking it. Four pawns attack, here we go. Knowing me, I've got to pick the most combative line possible. Um... All right, now, bishop g4 is an inaccuracy, moving the bishop twice in the opening. I learned the hard way that bishop e2 is not the correct response, because that drops the c-pawn. Uh, I think correct is I play queen d2 here. He chomps my knight, and we go on an adventure. I remember right, that's the right way to play this. And Black's just suffering from a space cramp. Actually, no, I learned the hard way. Don't play bishop e2 followed by bishop takes bishop. 
Vishmi 2 itself might be okay. Have I mystified him with my play here? I mean, I fully expected either queen d7 or castle. I'm sorry, or bishop e7. Either way, getting ready to castle one way or the other. Um, yeah, let's stop bishop b4. And I think white's fine. You castle, I castle, everybody castles. Really not seeing what he's doing. Um, can I get away with d5? I don't think so. It's amazing that I can't have even the thought of playing that here. Because uh, usually that's pretty dangerous. Oh man, can I... Will I live with myself? Will I be able to sleep at night if I don't play that move? Uh, if I play d5, he just takes e5. There's nothing fancy there. Um, so... How do I develop? I'm so confused what's going on. Maybe I just play bishop d3. I mean, no, that hangs my pawn. Here, let's ask his bishop where it's going. He's going to take it. Oh, yeah, people stream go pretty frequently here. Um, and then there's me. Technically, I do stream it, but... Um, most of it consists of me losing games in pretty horrifying manner. I have a lot to learn about Go. Well, here, no, I'm not so terrified about the time situation because I have an increment here. Um, you'd be surprised what you can play on an increment. Okay takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes. I don't have enough to support that. d5 here. Is this gonna work? d5, pawn takes, oh my god. Uh, pawn takes knight, queen takes queen, bishop takes queen. Wait, d5, pawn takes, pawn takes knight, pawn takes bishop, pawn takes queen check. Okay, we're doing this. This is too fun to not do. It's officially too fun. Oh, darn it. Uh, that's a pretty bad mouse slip. I need a new mouse. Um, okay. No, seriously? What's going on here? I gotta see what I can do on my end here. Maybe I just need. Yeah. Here's a thought. I'll challenge him to an unrated game. Um. Cause I don't do take backs in rated games, just on principle. Um. I'm still really curious what was going on in that previous game, and I will have to come back to it to figure that out. Um, oh, we're going this way, are we? If we're going to play the Tromp, we're going to play the Tromp. Oh, I forgot. He's played this a number of times, and I've played this many fewer times than he has. This might be a bit of a route. We'll see. Um, let's 
so okay. Is this not the book move? And then knight d6 was it? I'm just trying to remember. I think Zug has played this on his stream before. Or somebody else. Not just no joke. I've seen somebody else try something like this, I think. Um, so I think I gotta take d4. I'm not really compelled by this kind of setup here. I'm just confused how this could be advantageous. Um, Okay, so that queen on d4 is a little bit tricky to displace, that's for sure. Um, hey, wait, if I trade, do I get an endgame? Guys, we might be playing an endgame here. Yeah, let's try that. I'm curious where this goes. expecting knight takes. This might be better. Although this knight on b3 looks a little bit silly, but this might be better for white. Um, anyhow, I was intending e6 here. Um, e6 still seems reasonable. We're playing it. Okay, and now we'll just develop. Wait, have I transposed into some kind of Sicilian? And if so, why? Because, I mean, I don't really know a Sicilian. Nobody really knows it. Minus a few Grandmasters. Um, so... Yeah. Let's try this. I mean, if you don't particularly care for the colors that are part of the style, that's the, you could download the style and change the colors. You don't have to use this particular color set. Um, so, F5. I like how my bishop on c8 is doing nothing. So relaxed back at home like that. Alright. Um, so I guess I go back. Um, man. We've traded the queens and I still haven't gotten my endgame yet. When am I going to get my endgame? Okay. Well, it seems that the best way for this bishop to develop is not through my pawns, but around them. Uh, if somebody invents a way for bishops to go through pawns, let me know, because I would definitely like to use that strategy. Uh, but for today, it's going to go around the pawns. Alright. If 
I wasn't so committed to... Oh. Well, we'll just move my pieces around this center. Um... Try to keep some flexibility while doing all this. Bishop takes knight. There we go. Um, forward or backward? Backward looks safer. Oh, darn it. I should go click, click, move instead of click, drag. Either that or um, find a new battery, maybe. Uh, let's try this. Click, click. There we go. Um, yeah, I have to take. Ooh, that's kind of painful, isn't it? Well, we'll just pin that. And step out of some pins. Do some tactical wizardry. Free pawn. Yeah, I couldn't do anything to. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we'll develop this way. Uh, again, I couldn't do anything to stop these rooks from invading. So go back. Going back was a huge mistake, by the way, because it sets up this tactic. Uh, huh. That's cute. I have to go over. Oh, I'm probably getting mated here, aren't I? Okay, where's the mate? It's got to be there. There's your draw. I saved a draw. That was exciting. Um, hmm. I wonder how that should have played. Well, no, I, I was getting mauled at the end there. Um, okay, yeah, he's got to go. I want to look at this and the previous game. But prior to my mouse slip, I think I was doing reasonably. Uh, where was that? Yeah, if here if I had played g5, I could have built some initiative. Um... I'm not sure how much. What do you think? Oh no, I'm just getting rolled here. Okay, that's weird. So I should have allowed the exchange on d5. Yeah, I underestimated White's play of d5. I should have just left things as they were and developed my pieces around it. Um, was I doing well at any point here? I was doing okay in the opening and throughout the rest of the game. Um, I just didn't react well to White's plays. Um, 
Knight of seven's fine. Uh, rook c1. King h8 was a bit weird, I do agree. I should just develop. I, I was thinking I had all the time in the world here and did not really take this seriously because white doesn't have a pawn break. White's only pawn break is to play d5, and that looked like it was an incredible distance away. I really did not think that d5 was going to happen this game. Um, but yeah, no joke, found a way to make it work. That was impressive. Well, yeah, and his bishop c4, he tricked me. I mean, yeah, I should just finish development or even just take his bishop. Although, taking it's worse than just letting my pawns get doubled. Because even the doubled pawns ex um, have really good influence, and they aren't really easy targets at all. And white's center is kind of weird. Um, but, you know, I should have taken this e5 idea more seriously, because d5 does follow. Um, all this backing up means that my f5 idea was pretty ridiculous. I thought it was justifiable, but... Mm. And while Stockfish isn't calling this an inaccuracy, and isn't calling it a mistake, I am. I don't like this f5 move, just given what resulted from it. Um, so either I've got to go back earlier and say that the reason for my problems was something I did prior to f5, or I have to conclude that f5 itself was the mistake. Um, uh, knight c6 is pretty committal here, too. We haven't decided how any of this queenside stuff is going to form, so a more reasonable approach would have been just bishop e7, castle, and wait for white to commit to something more rigid. Um, but, let's see. Uh, um, also, yeah, just taking on d4 was silly. Um, why did I take on d4? Best move was knight f6. Oh! I could just go back to f6 here. Why didn't I think about that? I must be confusing this with some other line. I guess in the other line, white's played bishop h4, and that discourages knight f6. Whereas the way he played here does encourage me to just drop the knight back. What would be so bad about that? I mean, sure, it's a wasted tempo, maybe, but... Um, I wonder how this plays. If I go knight f6, white could play d5. That complements his bishop pretty well. I don't think he'd play bishop c1. He'd probably play queen c2, but that's an option. But yeah, the fact that his pawn's on d5 means I can fianchetto, and there's no pawn in the way of my bishop. So, I've got to remember knight f6 is an idea here. That's an interesting game. Um, prior to that, we had this other game with no joke. <laughs> hey, I could select that I want to play another game. How great is that? Um, I'll decline, I guess, because I want to look at this game. Um, so, where was it that... I think knight f3 is the book move here. I'm not so sure about knight c3. Um, can I tune in not to just Lee chess games, but I want the master's database. Yeah, knight c3 is the book move. Of course it is. And then knight f3. And I said bishop g4 is inaccurate. Oh, queen, or I'm sorry, bishop e2 is the, of course, I've played this before, bishop e2. And the idea is you castle. And um, if he's taken on f3, which I guess he usually does just to exploit this pin, you just play pawn takes, and your position's still pretty good. Sure, you don't have the half-open f-file, but you've got the bishop pair in what's going to be an open position. So black's 
going to suffer in um, if you just play bishop e3 or e2. Um, especially if he's lax and say you get something like bishop e2, queen d7, castle. And now you've got the half open f file to work with too. This, um, which you never get that. Black always takes here, but still, now you've got a pawn that's going to run to f5, and then you'll have your half open f file, and it's a great position. Very unpleasant for black. Um, but I didn't play that. So, let's try another game. Um, yeah, I guess we'll keep, we'll stick with the 3 plus 2. Alright, uh, knight of 3, knight of 6. If he does, oh, he plays knight c3. If he plays d4, we'll Grunfeld it. Uh, our, otherwise, we're going into a pure slash modern. I forget, no, this is a modern because he's played c4. Um, but now if he plays d5, I reroute my knight to c5, else I can break with e5. And on d5 we go knight e7. Um, in this line you can't play knight h5, he's just got too much firepower there, so you have to play knight e8 instead. Whoa! Whoa! That's not part of this opening. Um... This kind of gives black a free hand. Um, I, either that or I'm just completely off here. So I'm trying to figure out, is knight f6 the way to go? Is f4 the way to go? Do I take on e4? I know this is not something you typically see in this opening. If I take e4, I've got a half open f file takes, knight takes, I could do knight f6, which is kind of messy. I like it though. But I think even better, I just like playing f4 and just smash the king. My pawns race faster than his. At least I think so. Um... I mean, that really doesn't do much to quell my attack. Because you know what other piece moves diagonally? I mean... So... I'm not going to sack the queen on h3 or anything like that. At least I'm not intending to right now. But... Um, he's going to have to do something to slow this down. Okay, but now, now do I take on Passant? Probably not. Um, it's interesting, but I'm not, I, I think even better is I just play h5. And if he plays h3, I don't know. I think I do take it, though, the more I think about this. Um... Because who doesn't love open lines? If I play h5, he plays h3, I take he takes, I move my king away, he does likewise, and neither of us is really in control of what's happening. I'm going to play for complications here. Um, I think I follow with g4. So I'm asserting that that's my side of the board. Um, I might be completely, totally off in doing this. Um, I hope not, but there's always that possibility that I just uh, have all my targets calibrated the wrong way. Um, But that's why we play the games. 
it's not just opening theory, it's, um, it's uh, finding resources that either there are there or aren't there, and making the most of them. So I'm tempted to prepare the forthcoming trades with queen d7 linking my rooks together so that my queen doesn't get overloaded defend- oh, my bishop protects that too. So I'm not exactly exposing my king. Um, uh, do I take? Yeah, let's try this. Um, free pawn? Not sure if taking the free pawn was the right way to go. Practically speaking, in time pressure, you don't want to do that. Um, but it might be the most accurate move, in which case, if you don't do it, it's just psychological weakness to avoid it. Um, So my pawn chain is anchored on c7. I think it's pretty safe. I'm still struggling to find a good follow-up here. So far it's been pretty natural development, but finding the next few moves is going to be tricky. Uh, so the fact that his queen's not bearing on c7 means I've got some time to hit some stuff. Um, just lashing out at this point. Although, getting my bishop to h6 would be substantial progress, so if he's going to let me do it, that would be cool. Um, Alright, we're sacking, because I don't see what else to do here. Stop queen g4. I think I'm cooked. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. That's me dropping both of my rooks with check. Um, so what happened this game? Obviously my sack on f4 didn't work. Even, it was not even remotely close to working. h5 was optimistic, but I got just frustrated with the position and I was in time trouble. Uh, h5 itself was good. Rook c2 was poor. King h7 was not the best way to play. But I didn't see... Oh, that's the idea. Not to play bishop h6, but just push, keep pushing the pawn. And the good news here is that once his pawn moves, I've got knight f4 check. I didn't see that at all. I just saw, oh, well, he takes on h4, and I can't take back. Um... Yeah, no, this is definitely the way to go. That was cool. It's a shame it didn't turn out well. Um, but yeah, knight f2, wait, 
Let's back up. Was my F4 just dumb or was it good? F F4 was not best. I should have prepared with Knight F6. Uh, I avoided Knight F6 because I thought that if uh, I wrongly, mistakenly thought that F4 here was a hard counter. That's not. I just take here. Um, why Knight F6 doesn't win is because this, and then you just play F4, and everything's fine. I mean, okay, yeah, he could take f5, you take back, it's the same thing. But yeah, knight f6 makes more sense because it stops this bishop g4 idea. So f4, I mean, this totally deserves a question mark. If I could annotate it, I'd annotate it here. It's not a good move at all, given that knight f6 is so superior. Um, and sure, I did follow it up, and I thought it was doing fine. I especially was surprised by this g4 move. You saw how long I spent thinking about my move, or my reply. I did end up taking it, which uh, Stockfish approves. I followed, oh, just play this right away. Wow, that's strong. Somehow I thought white would just play queen h5 here. Don't even ask. Um, but yeah, this is cool. This is black having a field day. Alright, so now I understand how it came to be that I did not win that. I did not win that because I did not play the best moves. Well, let's try to play some better moves this time. All right. Here, let's play a King's Gambit. Get some tactics out on the board. And as I say that, my opponent declines to take my pawn. I offer the pawn again. You decline it again. How about you take this one? How many pawns do you want me to gambit before you're going to take one of them? Now, this is just me being silly. Nobody plays this move except me. Okay, can I play g4 here? We're playing g4. Alright, we got the four pawns attack. <laughs> Alright, this is gonna be fun. Um, it's possible that this might not be sound, so don't try this at home. Um, hmm. I mean... How do you follow this up? I'm tempted to just push g5. Just keep going. Um, here, let's play f5 though. It looks reasonable. So now if he plays knight h6, I can chomp it and give him an interesting pawn structure. Okay. He's saying I'm overextended. I mean, he's probably right. Um, I wish I had other pawns that I could push that would not ruin this. It's such a dramatic moment. And I'm just going to develop my pieces. Rather anticlimactically. But what can you do? Alright. Um, free pawn? Yeah. Okay, I, I think I've sufficiently confused my opponent. All right. Um, oh, I can't do bishop b5 and knight c7. That whole trick does not work here. Um, so I'll just have to pin this pawn. Alright, so you win my knight. We get a queen trade if I desire it. No, we don't. I don't desire it badly enough to lose my knight. Um, I'm confused. 
Well, let's develop my knight. I say as I put it on the edge of the board. Uh, oh, that actually does counter my knight g6 trick. Darn. Is he going to castle? Because I can imagine this would be a great position for black to castle kingside. Oh, he does it. All right, so much for me being facetious. Um, I play bishop g2, preparing castling queenside and sacking the house here. Or I just play king f2. Yeah, uh, or I could play bishop f4. I mean, there's a ton of options here. There's, like, really no wrong move. Other than castle and kingside. Um, so, e4 is hanging. I'm in no rush to take it because he can't defend it. Um, if I pin his knight, he just steps out of the pin. I don't know. Let's pin the knight. Just see what happens. Good old hope chess. Don't forsake me now, hope chess. All right, so uh, let's set a little trap here. Oh, damn it. Knight g6 is not mate. Never mind. OK, now knight g6 is mate. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Understandably, he wants a rematch. Okay. How do you counter uh, that? Oops. Well, I mean, that works, too. I did not intend to play f6. I was intending f5, which is probably worse than what I actually played. So let's be thankful. Um, yeah, this position does get awkward for sure. Yeah, that's it's a really silly checkmate pattern. That's. Um, we can agree on that. All right, so if I play queen e7, he plays knight g6, and we've seen that before. Um, if I play g6, pawn takes, pawn takes, queen takes, uh, I'm still getting mated there, unfortunately. Well, no. No, 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 that's not true. Queen takes, queen e7. I mean, we could trade on f7. It's not terrible. We're going to try it, I think. Because if I castle, this gets really... This does get ugly, right? Castle, knight g6. I can't take it because I get mated, so I'd have to move away. I don't know. I think I'm actually okay if I'm castled. It just looks incredibly scary having a knight at your front door um, but no that's probably the right way to play this g6 drops a pawn but uh, feels a lot more solid um, but no, he should have played a3, giving this bishop somewhere to go. That would be the way to really put the screws to black there. Black's okay here. It looks awkward, it is awkward, but black's fine. And see, I just develop. It's no big deal. I mean, yeah, it's a ton of wasted tempi, but black's fine. Let's play bishop d7. Um, bishop 
for sidestepping a fork. Although the fork itself is not that good. But uh, let's get out of the way of the discovery. I mean, as long as I don't do anything rash here, I'm okay. Uh, I don't know if h6 is okay. h6, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes... Uh, I'm okay, I think. I think I'm defended reasonably well. Um, with this queen in front of the pawns, it's a lot less scary than if the queen were, say, on g3 or h3 or something behind them. So we'll just evict the knight. No big deal. All right, he's trapped his queen. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll set a little tricky trick. See if he's paying any, oh wait. I can't take f5. This rook's defending f5. <sighs> Why don't my traps work? I mean, they scare my opponents, but they should at least resemble being sound if I'm going to play them. Um, there's not really a resemblance of that one. Okay, so we pin the knight. Oh my goodness, I am miscalculating. Yeah, that knight's not pinned. In my efforts to be clever, I am destroying my position. to take here. Really my only counter chances lie on the F file. All he just has to do is play H7 and I'm screwed, but he's not going to do that. That would require patience. Oops. Yeah, I'm in trouble regardless. I can't stop either queen h7 or queen h8. Um, yeah, that fell apart really quickly. Alright, did I... Was I goofing around this game or was this... Okay, yeah, I forgot about that. But um, still, this shouldn't have gone as nearly as far south as it did. Putting my bishop there was uh, pretty terrible for it. I should have kept it, I don't know, not trapped like that. Um, okay, I don't have a lot of respect for this gambit. Um, because I think it's pretty... I don't see black getting tons of pressure for the pawn. It's a lot of harassment, but it's not really long-standing pressure as far as I've seen. Um, All right, wait, do I take a7 here? Do I grab a second pawn? Is my position that solid that I can afford to do that? I think so. Let's take it and find out. Um, 
Oh, hang on, I dropped a rook. Uh, you can tell just how much attention I'm paying by how many pieces I give away. Okay. Let's see if I can at least trap the knight and not be down an entire rook for two pawns. Um, that'd be great. Yeah, obviously he's intending knight e4, knight takes, bishop takes, and trying to get the knight out. So before that happens, I'm going to grab the knight. On the bright side, hey look, I'm the one who sacked material instead of him, so I'm going to get a freer game for it. Oh look, wonderful, I've lost my connection. Um, so we'll just hope that that reconnects. Is my stream up? Stream's up, stream's doing just fine. All right, so I'm back. Um, let's go back here. Oh, hey, look, he's got knight g4, picking off the other rook. But that was the only square my queen could go. Uh, unless you count d4. But I'm not counting d4 because I didn't see it. And now look, my opponents and I've disconnected and we're back. So oh, I'll disconnect it again. My ping time is about one second. I have a feeling this might be the last chess game for tonight. What do you guys think? Oh, the stream's still up and running. So I'll have to figure out what's going on here. I really don't imagine that it's the stream interfering with um, Leechus. Perhaps it is. I mean, do I have some settings here that could maybe... No, my bitrate's pretty low. Okay. Took my opponent about a minute to move. Um, let's deal with the knight g4 threat. Um, do I play d4? Yeah, I mean... That's a free tempo. Okay. Let's get the king out of there. And I've emerged with an extra 60 seconds relative to my opponent. Um, thanks to the weirdness that occurred. So that worked in my favor. I don't know if he was spending all that time thinking or not. I'm going to encourage him to take g2, because um, being down just in exchange is no fun. I'm sorry, being down in exchange for a pawn is no fun. You have to be down the full exchange for to get the entire effect of it. Um, Oh, he takes. Okay. He checks me. He checks me not. He checks me. He checks me not. He checks me not. Okay. Um, I trap your rook, sir. That is one trapped rook. Now he checks me. Yeah, I called it. He's going to do it sooner or later. Um, 
Wait, how many rooks am I going to get to trap this game? I'm guessing the answer depends on just how much time I'm up. Uh, let's first kick this rook. And then take that one. I like that little intermezzo of the kick there. Snap the knight moves, I've got pressure on f7. Um, hmm. Really not sure what to make of that. I need to activate my rook. Hey, look, I'm sacking more material. We'll just pretend that this is a willing sacrifice. I've got to go back. Uh, let's do that. Develop. Uh, take one of those. Try to shore this up. Um, I don't want to push. And yet pushing seems to be the only halfway reasonable thing to do here. Um, Got to hold this together. Yeah, that's a really strong pawn break. Uh, you have no idea how strong that pawn break is. Okay, I have to take that. Um, my king side collapses, but I've got some pawns that can run. Oops. Well, it's not instant death. I do have this. In terms of strategy, it's instant death. In terms of tactics, I'm still kicking. Um, though not for long. Let's go, Pong, go! All our hopes and dreams lie in your future. Okay. Well, that was exciting. Um, in light of the fact that there was so much of an internet problem during that game for both players, it's probably a good time to adjourn. Um, in the final position, I'm down six points, so... Okay, good Good on me for winning that, but um, not very sound. So where did this fall apart? Well, okay, yeah, losing the queen was kind of a not a positive thing. Okay, at one point I did have a reasonable looking position. And then my bishop a3 actually activated his rook. I could have later... Oh, I could have just taken on f8 and then played king c3, got my king out of here. And I still need to find a way to activate this rook. Um, okay, Stockfish actually prefers rook e1 here. And I don't blame it. Um, geez. That's one fun graph. So my first position in which I had something not terrible was here. I could have played knight d... oh! That's another way to uh, not lose f2. Um, so, okay. We're not going to claim that I refuted the gambit. Um, Stockfish really didn't like my grabbing the a7 pawn. Because, uh, yeah, that did drop the rook. 
I should just go back queen d1 and d3, and I'm just A-OK -okay here. Nothing special. My position is slightly better. Rook b8 is pretty passive. I've not seen anybody play this particular gambit um, with a lot of aggression. I mean, maybe once I've seen somebody try to win, like, tactically out of the opening from the black side. Um, now, this is the Lee Chess website with um, some custom user styles. Um, in my mind, this makes it easier for me to see what's going on. Um, perhaps not so much for you guys, but I prefer it this way. But yeah, I've not seen anybody, like, minus one person try to pro play for a win with the black pieces in this gambit. It's among the gambits that could be played, it seems like a much tamer one. One where black just has some nagging pull, um, and white's up the pawn, and I mean, I guess that's going to be kind of true of most black gambits. Um, there are some where black gets a really double-edged position. This is a lot mellower. Um, you think that, given all the negative things I said about this, maybe this would be something I could play as black, but it really doesn't fit in my style very well. Whereas I tend to play really hyper aggressive stuff um, where possible. This just seems a lot tamer than the sort of stuff I would play. Um, queen b3 is not right, so just play bishop b2 here. I mean, I'm not at all expecting bishop g4. Because um, this offers to trade off one of black's better pieces. And say we do trade, queen d3, oh, do I not play b3 here? Stockfish prefers giving the pawn back. I really don't like that. Um, obviously, I'm not a big fan of um, queen takes and then knight d4. I don't really have a follow-up there, but queen d3, what's wrong with b3? It's... Okay, this is not in the master database. Um, does the local computer have an opinion? That says this is equal-ish, and black just plays e5. Which is kind of what I expected, but what's so great about castling? I don't like it. I mean, that's... yeah, I mean, you have to play b3. There's no question. You don't castle and just get the worst endgame ever. That's kind of an overstatement on my part, but um, what I'm so strongly objecting to is what's being suggested here. I guess black doesn't have to take it right away, although I probably would. And, I mean... Okay, yeah, maybe a computer could eke a win out of this, but most humans against other humans um, will find this position very stale. Because, um, okay, white's got a pawn on the half-open d-file, but white's got no center. Or a very, very, I don't know, the, a center where the knights are leading the attack here and the bishop's on the wrong color with respect to white's pawns and black can easily set up formations with his pawns on light squares if he really needs to or if he wants to even so black really has no weaknesses and white has an isolated d pawn and this is just really awkward and clunky for white and Stockfish doesn't really appreciate how awkward this is. It's pretty optimistic. It wants to play d3. Um, it's kind of divided between queen g4 and queen a6. Um, I actually, yeah, I'm siding toward queen a6 here. And Okay, sure, yeah, you play that and you try to double black's pawns. 
I guess you do get away with doubling them. But um, now this kind of resembles a caro and that you get the half open G file. You got a dark squared bishop, a doubled pawn, and white's got no bishop pair. And you see now this is trended back towards zero. Um, Stockfish doesn't like this anymore. It's not saying that it's going to lose this or anything, but uh, Stockfish has no idea how to play this. Um, so that all said, we had some interesting games today. Um, I've lost my connection to Leech Us here again. Hopefully they'll get that worked out server side, because I'm pretty sure it's not my computer. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us. It's been fun. And I uh, hope to see you guys next time.